Yeah, I can think of no better treat to give to give all the folks who've been working for so long on this the opportunity to meet someone who I have a tremendous amount of respect for and who I consider, uh, and I think we all do, a great American hero, and that's Senator John McCain. Um, a couple of things that... that and, and in spite of the fighter palace ego, I realize that you all did not come here to listen to me tonight. Uh, <laughs> But um, what, I, what I do want to say, though, is just a little bit of history here. Back in, in the summer of 1999, I was, Renee and I were living in, in Alexandria, Virginia, and I went out for a run. I was flying in the Air National Guard there. I went out for a run and came on this dilapidated old building uh, that I looked at very closely. I had a sign that said McCain for president on it. And, uh, I walked in and wound up volunteering. And I did not know a lot about the senator's politics at that point, but I certainly knew about his military history, and the thing that attracted to me, him to me at the time was character. And because I had known in the military and in, in other pursuits that character trumps everything. And that's what drew me to that campaign then. It's what drew me to that campaign in 2008 when I had the honor of running the National Veterans Organization for, uh, for the Senator. And uh, uh, I'd also like to think that in some small way we've tried to emulate uh, the insurgent campaign that, that he ran, particularly in, in 2000. Because that's what we've done here, a very grassroots effort, uh, just building support, one kitchen, one living room, and one gathering at a time. And the folks that have come out here tonight, I'm very humbled to have to have you all here and to have the, uh, the support of so many folks here. We've come a long way in a short period of time. And uh, I thank you very much and uh, appreciate your support. And with that said, I'd like to turn it over to the man that you came to, to actually see and chat with, Senator John McCain. <laughs> Thank you, Lang, and I, uh, I want to come by to say uh, thank you. Everybody in this room had something else to do this evening and for the last several weeks and even months to be here, and I'm very grateful. I believe that it's going to be a very close election on Tuesday. We may be up late, but we're going to win this race, and it's because of your effort. And again, you're the ones that make elections happen and victories happen, so I wanted to say thank you. I want to say thank you very much because right now our nation needs leaders and this is a proven leader and I, I can't argue with you that this is the most dangerous time in America's history but I can argue that it is one of the most dangerous times. When we look around the world and we see the threats to America's security, we're still in two wars, we're drawn down from one, uh, thank God, but we're escalating in casualties and action other one in Afghanistan. We need people who understand our national security issues and the needs of the men and women who are serving. I go over there all the time to Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's a humbling and, and invigorating experience. But the fact is, we don't have enough people in Congress today who represent those men and women who know what it's like to serve know what it's like as I was over Fourth of July outside Kandahar, and here are our brave men and women in the military in 120 degree heat with 40 pounds of body armor on and equipment and standing out there and uh, blowing wind and dust, and they're doing it with enthusiasm and patriotism and love of this country. And they understand that Afghanistan returns to a base for attacks on the United States of America that it could lead to another 9-11, and we can't let that happen. And we got lots of lawyers in Congress, my friends. We got all kinds, we got all kinds of lawyers, and that's uh, you can make your own judgment. But first of all, I guess I should ask you: Do you know the difference between a lawyer and a catfish? One is a scum-sucking bottom dweller, and the other is a fish. <laughs>
We uh, are arresting people with alarming frequency who are citizens of this country, who have been indoctrinated by this incredible, hateful brand of radical Islamic extremism. And so I think that Lang is much needed in Congress, not only to represent this district of the state of Colorado, but to represent all the men and women who are serving and have served. And I don't want to finish my comments without mentioning the veterans. You may know that uh, our veterans are coming back home and some of them are undergoing difficulties that uh, are hard to cope with and in many times hard to diagnose. And so our veterans need another veteran who understands how we can fulfill our obligations to them. And so I would argue with you that this guy will hit the ground running. He will have an immediate leadership role in the United States Congress. People will look to him for guidance. People will look to him for leadership. And so I want to say to you, thank you for all of your effort. In the next 48 hours, in a close race as this one is, could make the difference. As you know, I realize that a lot of the votes have already been cast. But I also realize, as you do, there's a lot of votes that haven't been cast. So I hope you'll take a lot of time in the next 48 hours identifying our voters, getting them out, and doing the necessary things to make sure that we don't lose this race because we did get our voters out, that we win this race because we had the grassroots organization, which is what usually almost always wins campaigns. So Lang, I'm pleased to be here with you and Renee and your beautiful children. Thank you for your willingness to serve. But I came mainly to thank all of you for your efforts on behalf of a good, decent American hero. Thank you very much.